Hey, welcome back. We got most of our furniture purchased, all of it put together, and most of the day yesterday I spent putting together this shelving unit and hanging it on the wall, which took a long time, mostly because of making sure that I had it mounted up there well so that it could hold the weight of the shelf itself and then everything that we want to put in it. Then the goal for today is to get the TV mounted on the wall with the wires running through the wall. Um, Sarah's at brunch right now, so I'm gonna try to get the actual TV mount up and the wires ran and then when she gets back she can help me get the TV onto the wall. So what I've done so far is I've measured how far the cabinet is away from the wall and then put a piece of tape at the same distance from the wall here and then measured um, the actual length of the unit and then put another piece of tape on this side that distance from this one so that way I know exactly where the unit is so that way I can put a mark in the direct center and then right now I'm measuring the distance between the cabinet and our TV stand and making sure I get in the center of that then I can figure out where to actually put the mount so it's going to be somewhat centered in between the two cabinets and a pro tip for doing this type of stuff hanging pictures or anything like that is to use painters tape like for a picture you can just take the painters tape and do a strip the actual size of the picture and mark where the hooks are for that picture. That way you can put the tape on the wall and use a level to level it out and you know exactly where to put your screws or your nails for the picture. And then when you put it up there, it's exactly where you want it to go and you know it's level. <laughs> Okay, let me show you what I did here. I have the measurement of how wide the cabinet is, here to there. This is the measurement of exactly center. And then I had this measurement, which is center between the top of the bottom of this and the top of the TV cabinet. And so the top edge in this right here, that is perfectly center, vertical, and horizontal. And then what I did was I took this long piece of tape and I measured the TV and then I divi divided that by two and got the center and then matched up the center line exactly with this tape. So now I know that the actual TV is going to be centered in between the cabinets. But then what I also did was I measured to the top of the mount on the back of the TV and put that on here. So now when I hang this up here, all I have to do is make sure that the center is matched up with the tape and then make sure I put the top of the mount right on that line. And then once the TV is on there, it will be perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of tape about the size of the actual mount and I'm gonna put it on the top of the mount line. This one doesn't necessarily have to be level because what I'm gonna be doing is marking it where the studs are. If you don't have a stud finder, an easy way to find a stud is to look for an outlet because generally a stud is gonna be either on the left or the right of the outlet. And then if you have a tape measure, studs are generally every 16 inches and actually most tape measures mark it differently so the 16 inch mark is red on this tape measure. Once you find one, then you can mark every 16 inches and you should be able to hit a stud. So now that I found this one, I'm gonna mark, measure 16 inches and then I'll check it. What a stud finder is doing is finding the actual edge. So once it starts beeping at you and telling you where it's at, mark that and then turn it off. Go to the other side, a little over two inches away, turn it on and then work your way back to where you just marked and then mark that. And that's gonna be the edges of the stud and then you can put your screw in the middle. So this mount actually isn't long enough to go three studs wide, but luckily there's actually a stud almost directly center. So I'll be able to put a bolt right into a stud, and then on the other two sides we'll just have to do wall anchors. What I was checking there is the TV can actually slide left and right on the stand, so I was seeing if I can move the mount over to be on two studs if the TV could still be centered, which I have to move it over almost three inches to hit two studs, and the TV only has about two inches to move, so it'd be an inch or more off center if I was to do that. So we're just gonna go with bolt in the middle and anchors on the sides. <laughs> Okay, I got the stand mounted. 
it's not going anywhere. Next thing I'm gonna do is run the cables. And generally what I see people doing in their houses and especially in apartments is just running the cables down the wall and then getting like a little cord cover or something like that, which is perfectly fine. I personally would rather have everything in the wall. And if you don't want to pay for an electrician to come in and put a plug up here, especially in an apartment, you don't have to because you can actually buy one of these cabling kits. It's an in-wall power cable kit and it actually has a power cable that's rated for in-wall that runs from the bottom to the top and there's a small extension cord that runs to an outlet on the wall to the bottom plate and then it runs up to the top and you can plug your TV in there. It also comes with everything you need to pull your cables, your HDMI's and everything through the wall. You are putting two large holes in the wall but those are easy to patch. You can just get a wall patch kit whenever you move out and it's perfectly fine. So the kit even comes with the drill bit that you need to cut the perfectly sized hole for the plate that's gonna go in the wall. And if you don't have a drill, it even comes with a little hand crank that you can use. The only thing you have to worry about when you're deciding where to actually put the holes, just make sure that the bottom and the top hole are generally in line with each other and you don't drill it on either side of a stud. So if you get the bottom hole on the left side of a stud and the top hole on the right side of the stud, you're not gonna be able to get your cables over there. Also you don't want to actually drill it into a stud because that just wouldn't work. So just make sure you're over to the side of a stud and that you drill your top and bottom holes pretty much in line on the same side of the stud. I'm gonna do my top hole first. I'm gonna do it over kind of to the left side because all the connections on my TV are actually on the left side. There's nothing over on the right. So it'd be easier for everything to just come out over the left side. Hole one drilled. It also may be a good idea to actually keep the piece of the wall around. That way whenever you remove this, you can pop the wall back in and use the wall patch kit to go over it. Now I need to run all my HDMI's and audio cables. Another good idea is to run one additional HDMI than what devices you have. That way, just in case you add a device later, you'll have an HDMI already run through the wall and you don't have to take the TV off and do all the extra work. Okay, so now all the cables are ran through the wall. Next step is to put the TV up and plug everything in. And then the way the power works is it comes with this extension cord. Plug it into the wall. And then over here, there's an outlet. Plug that in. Now the TV is powered. All right, the TV is hung. The cables are managed. And now we have this kind of entertainment console area. The only thing I'd love to do is uh, hang our speakers. That's what those white cables are there. I'm gonna hang the speakers up on the wall um, Because we actually don't have any floor space left on either side to use the stands like we had in our old house It makes a massive difference having the TV on the wall versus on the stand. It makes this area look So much better with the TV on the wall. So if you can I would definitely recommend getting your TV off of the console and onto the wall it will upgrade the look of your space so much. I'm gonna continue cleaning this up and getting the speakers up later because it is Saturday. And so Sarah and I are gonna go explore some neighborhoods. Probably find Sarah some shoes. Um, so let's do that. that drain me faster than clothes shopping. That New York pizza by the slice life though is no joke. It's true. It's so good. Champion pizza um, is really good for like 
one or two dollar slices. Champion Pizza on Rivington and Essex is the cheapest one we found. That one's like actually one dollar for a cheese slice. The one in Olita is like two dollars for a cheese slice. But Pomodoro on Spring Street has really awesome vodka pizza. It's four dollars a slice, but it's massive and totally worth it.